It was a real commitment. And it was radical. I, I mean, for the two of us to do that, we had three young children. Our youngest was going into kindergarten. What we knew is that God was leading us to do it. And the thing is, there weren't all the parts and pieces in place that allow you to feel comfortable right. with stepping into something. Mm -hmm. And so we had a number of even family members and people who love us and know us who said, you're being irresponsible. You don't quit your job in a time of recession with three young children, you have a nice profession, making a decent income, you have your health benefits, you have your retirement, don't quit your job. But when God makes something very clear, you have the choice to either say, I'm gonna to listen to the people around me, or I'm going to listen to what I know mm -hmm. he is guiding us into when you're young like that, which we were, if, if you have a dream, I mean, you, you kind of have one chance to pursue your dreams. And you either do it or you choose the safe route and not to do it. We were pretty sure it was God telling us to do this, but what if we missed it? What if we were wrong? At least we were giving it a shot and going after our dream. And that has made all the difference. I think it's like a teacher's dream. We're very focused on what's good for children. And the reason I say that this is like a teacher's dream is that it is amazing for children. Being able to start by focusing on the child and ask what's the very best we can do to support the growth of this amazing person who's full of potential and completely unique. What's the best we can do to support them? And then whatever we come up with, we can put it into action. And if something's working well, we'll do it more. And if something's not working very well, we can revise it, we can change it. That's like a teacher's dream. Favorite thing about teaching here is the relationship building with the students. It's such a vital part because if I sense that they are not learning well and they're not able to focus, then I can say, what's going on? And if I have that relationship with them, then they're more apt to be more engaged and more in tune. That's when the learning happens. The best part is that every day is different. I super love being able to be outside so much and the kids love it too. It's just so different. They'll be like, can we, can I do my math outside on the deck? And like, I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Like letting kids come up with their own ideas and then just go with it. And they always go further and farther than I ever expect. My favorite thing is just the connections with families, having the ability to pray with students, and I think just the autonomy, you know, just being able to have that freedom of being able to teach, you know, the different topics based on what the children are interested in versus having a hardcore 
curriculum that needs to be met. My all-time favorite thing would be the relationships that I get to build with families. It's not just about the student and the whole child, but it's about their, their whole family and doing life with them. One of my favorite things about being a teacher at Prodigy is that no matter what is on the agenda for the day, it's always ultimately what God wants. Being able to be led by the Holy Spirit is one of the things that I treasure the most about being a teacher here. God is our teacher and he's always teaching me things about my students, about myself as a teacher. Being able to listen to his voice in order to meet their needs is one of the things that just really resonates with me um, and something that I'm just super grateful for. Being able to learn each child and know exactly who God has created them to be, encouraging them to move into new areas of learning, and then also supporting their natural God-given talents is one of the most priceless things that you do every day here. It's the autonomy, like I'm trusted. I'm not being told you have to follow this like specific curriculum and you have to do this every day and that every day. I can follow the interests of the children. I can stop and meet them where they are. And for me, that just means everything. My favorite part is the relationship building. Being able to have such a close-knit relationship with my students. And it feels like we're family. And it also creates a breeding ground of trust and respect and and then they are they're excited to learn like they're just excited to bring their ideas to me and tell me what they're interested in and they feel like they can because they have that close relationship and I think we feel the highest level of accountability too and that's unique and special the accountability comes from the idea that I have the opportunity to make the best choices to serve the child with excellence and because I have that opportunity I also have that responsibility. And then I'm interacting with parents frequently. All of these elements really raise the feeling of accountability. I have to do my best. Parents are involved in a slew of ways, lots of ways. Some parents may come in, volunteer, read with students, practice some math facts. So uh, parents go as chaperones on field trips. Parents come as guest speakers. Parent from India who came and spoke with a class about life growing up in that culture. So a, a child's relationship with their parent is so important. And we never want the parents to feel separated from the process. So we always want them to be, feel that invitation to be a part of the process. And I'd say it's, it's, we give them an invitation to be involved, but we also pursue parents. We go after them. I mean, we're reaching out to them. And even when they first come for a visit, we're already asking parents, what are your interests? What are your hobbies? What are the things that you love to do and what goals do you have? Really, we're cultivating here a whole culture that everyone loves to learn. Because then if we're all doing that all the time, we're modeling for the children one of the great facets of this mysterious life. Leah was having a hard time. She found out, we found out uh, in May, that she has epilepsy. And she went from being at a middle school situation to a junior high. So she was switching teachers a lot. And I think just all of the, the challenges that she was experiencing with epilepsy made it really hard to make those connections. You know, she's a slow to warm up kid anyway. And then you put the fact that, you know, the other seventh graders were worried about things that, you know, average seventh graders worry about. You know, does my hair look good? And did that boy look at me? And, <laughs> and all of this. And, and here's our daughter. She's worried about, will I ever be able to drive? Will I have, a big seizure someday. I think she just felt isolated and it got really difficult. She was her. afraid. I mean, she wouldn't raise her hand in class. She'd never participate. Yeah. And that's, and that's not the way you know, probably, is it? 
I think the sec first second day she's like, yeah, I participated in class today and did this. I'm like, yeah. That, that, that's awesome. That yeah. gives me goosebumps right now, you know, so. Coming here and the idea of having the same teacher for two years, having the same teacher all day, being with the same kids all day, uh, really gave her an opportunity to make those connections. And everybody has been so welcoming. This school doesn't necessarily say, okay, you learn differently than others, so you're gonna go over here. How is she liking it here? <laughs> she loves it. She loves it, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even even last week was spring break. You ready to go back to school? Uh, it's like Wednesday, you ready to go back to school? Yes. I'm like, basically, can we start tomorrow? Yeah. Um, sometimes we're kind of dragging, like, hey, another week, here we go again, but you ready for school, Leah? Yeah, I'm ready, absolutely, so. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, I was talking to her the other day and I said, so you've been going here a while. How do you like it compared to the other schools that you've gone to? You know, she has been to about, I don't know, two or three other schools and it was all like this and this was prodigy. <laughs> so, you know, that was wonderful to see as parents, you know, that we've got her in a place that she's, she's really happy. There are a lot of things I love about school here, but if I had to pick one, I would pick the relationship between your classmates and your teacher. It's just, it's just a huge family here. I don't, it's not even a school, it's just a family. We work at our own level. Um, our teachers treat us like their own kids. With other schools, they limit you to a little desk, but here your creativity can be like let out. Probably all the projects and us as well, all the outdoor learning and all the outdoor activities that we do. It's a lot more hands-on. Um, math. <laughs> math. My favorite thing is also math. Give me a recess. Snack. I only know everything. I like all kinds of words. Recess. The art center. To go outside. I like to do math. I like to do art. So we get to learn about Jesus. My favorite thing is to hang out with my friends, play math games. I like to do recess and I also like to do math. I like to do math and I like playing at recess. So my favorite thing is that we have a school pet, which is a kitty. Um, math. My favorite thing is to be creative. Going for Oh, my favorite thing is math, recess, and lunch. I, I like the math books that we use. Field trips and recess. I already asked you I to think math. we just walked in for math. It's everybody's saying math. Everybody's all excited about math. <laughs> what else do you guys like to do? What about right out there? PE. There's lots of options, and if you're a little behind, they would stick with you and try to help you. Um, how creative you can be. You have the freedom to give your own thoughts and learn at your own pace. Well, I learn at your own pace too. Probably that we get to work on our own level, and the teachers will do whatever it takes to help us understand it. Probably doing passion projects and being able to, um, like go into the woods or play by the pond and stuff like that. Creative activities they have and amount of free room and space we have. They let us work at our own pace, passion projects, um, the woods. I love the woods. Probably that you can work at your own pace and it's just a beautiful campus and just everything. Yeah. Four days, not five. That you learn it. It's more hands on and it's just not behind the desk. Yeah. You have a relationship with everybody and you're friends with everybody and you go outside a lot. So you get to go outside a lot and then you get to learn at your own pace and you're like, feels like you're friends with everybody. Not everybody can learn at their own pace. That's what I was gonna say. That's how you kind of like learn at your own level, like adjust the lessons to kind of fit you and your difficulty level better. To me, one of the most wonderful and fascinating aspects of learning is inspiration. And when I was becoming a teacher, I remember this quote in my training experience, education is not the filling of a bucket, it's the lighting of a fire. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I heard that, I thought, oh, that sounds great. Like that resonates with me. When I went into education, it seemed too much like we're filling buckets. I mean, we just hired a brand new employee this past week. and for her good friend to be telling me that it's changed her life in a week 
we hear that kind of stuff frequently. Or for a junior high student to approach me and say, thanks for starting this school because I think I would have really been messed up if I hadn't had the opportunity to get to know God. That, I can't even describe how special that is. And sometimes when I go home at the end of the day and I'm really tired and my daughter asks me, how's your day? I reflect and I think, it was really full and it was completely right. I wouldn't have changed anything about it. It had lots of challenge, lots of breakthrough. It was really rich and it was the way it was supposed to be. Not many people, I don't think, have that special opportunity. And to me, that's what it means to live for God and to say yes when he says, I have something I'd like to invite you to do. Because you don't want to miss that. Like you're designed for that. You have to go for it.